Hi everyone, Mikey N6IL here, and today I'm sharing with you some of my prized possessions. This is my entire collection of RS-232 connectors and adapters. But I'm actually not going to go through every single item in this collection. I'm going to show you how to build your own RS-232 hacking kit and also how to use it to be able to connect a couple things together. I feel that this is the lost art of RS-232 hacking. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. All right, we're going to be studying from first principles here. So here I have two different serial connections. They're both 9-pin connectors. They're both 9-pin male. So if I want to connect these two things together, I need some adapters. So let's bring in those adapters. Here are the two adapters that I need. And if you can see, they're marked. This one goes from 9-pin female to 25-pin male. This one goes 25-pin female to 9-pin female. They're both female on this side because they need to plug into the cable. But one side is male and the other side is female on this side. So I can plug them in together this way and I can plug the two cables in. But I'm not going to do that. And here's the other cable. Now that I have my 9-pin to 25-pin adapters, let's bring in the next gadget. This is an RS-232 tester. This is a pretty old one. It's 25-pin, but it has a female connector on this side, has a male connector on this side, and it has uh, LEDs to indicate what the state of the RS-232 connection is. So let's plug that in over here and see what we get. So if we plug this in, we can see that we have pin two, which is transmit data, pin four, which is RTS, and pin 20, which is DTR. Okay, so that's on side one of this connection. I'm going to unplug the tester and I'm going to bring in the other side of the connection. I'm just going to go here. Here's the other side of the connection. And if we take a look at this side, we can see that we have the same thing. We have pin two, pin four, and pin 20. So what that means is if I try to take these two cables and plug them into each other, it's not going to work because if I plug in on this, you know, this side again, I have pin two, pin four, and pin 20. If I plug in on this side, I have exactly the same thing. I have pin two, pin four, and pin 20. So, I need a way to be able to connect these two things together. So now we're going to bring in the next device, which is an RS-232 patch box. And if you can see here, it has all 25 of the lines. It actually has 24 of them. And we can make a little adapter. Okay. So here's my breakout box. 
I'm going to make a few connections here so that we can actually connect these two things. So the first thing I need to do is I need pin seven. So we're going to start over here and two, three, four, whoops, two, three. Here's pin seven over here. I'm doing the same thing on this side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So this is my ground connection. Next, I'm going to bring another wire and we're going to connect pin two to pin two, which is the transmit. And I'm going to connect pin three to pin three, which is the receive. All right, so this is what I've done. I've connected transmit to transmit and receive to receive. So if I use this adapter and I put it on the end here, I should see exactly the same thing that I saw uh, when I plug the adapter directly into the cable. But I've only connected pin two transmit. I haven't connected any of the other connections. So it looks like I've wired this correctly, but I still can't plug it into the other side. As I have transmit on this side, and again, I have transmit on this side. So we can fix this in our breakout box very simply. All that we need to do is we need to cross pin two and pin three. So pin two on this right side, I'm going to connect to pin three on the left side and pin three on the left side, I'm going to connect to pin two on, well, I said that wrong, but you get the idea. I'm actually crossing the two wires. As you will see here in the diagram, I have my ground, I have pin two to pin three and pin three to pin two. So when I put my RS-232 tester on here, now instead of transmit, I have receive. So I've taken the transmit connection from this cable over here and I've crossed it over onto receive. So now, if I plug in my other connection, we're actually going to have both receive and transmit, which means that these two devices can now talk to each other. Now, suppose that I need to do a little bit more. I need some flow control here. All right, let's, let's work on a little bit of flow control. Going back to the diagram, RTS is pin four and CTS is pin five. So we're going to cross those two connections over so that we can have a little bit of flow control. So I have two more Two more wires here. Let's get these connected. So here's pin four over here. And that goes to pin five on this side over here. And I have one more wire. Pin five on this side connects to pin four on this side, right inside the here, underneath inside there. Okay, so 
now that I have this, I have a little bit of flow control. So let's review what we've got over here on this cable. Okay. So on this cable, I have pin two transmit, pin four RTS. Receive and CTS have nothing. So if our adapter is working correctly, we should have two lights down here. Receive data and CTS. Let's plug in our adapter and see what we get. Here's the adapter and here's the tester. So as we said, if our adapter is working correctly, now we have received data and CTS. So if I plug in the other side of the cable, we should have four lights that light up. And we do. We have transmit data, RTS, CTS, and receive data. These four lights right here. They're going through our little crossover adapter. So this is as basic of a serial connection as you can get. We have receive and transmit. We have RTS and CTS, so we can have some flow control. These five connections will get you most of the way through your life in RS-232. Okay, we can bring in another gadget. Let's get rid of this adapter. So you don't have to always use a breakout box to do this. They actually have no modem adapters. So here's the null modem adapter. And you can see on the little schematic here, if I get it a little bit, see how close I can get this. So you can see on the little schematic here, pin seven goes through over here, pin two and three are crossed, and pin four and five are crossed. This is exactly the connection that I made in this breakout box. It's exactly like this. So since I have this adapter, all I need to do is plug it in and these two things can talk to each other. But if you don't have this adapter, you can use a breakout box to make one. Two. So now I'm going to show you the entire kit. If you really want to become an RS-232 hacker, you should have all of these pieces in your kit. So here are the two adapters that we talked about. Here's the RS-232 tester and here's the breakout box. So these are the parts that we've already talked about. So I have another set of adapters here, these two. And if you take a look at these, you'll find a pretty interesting pattern. We have here all four possible combinations. We have male, 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 female, female, male, and female, female. So because I have all four connections or all four possibilities, that means that I can pretty much adapt anything to anything. Suppose I had two female nine pin connectors. If I take these two and plug them together, female goes here and female goes here. Same thing with male. If I had two male nine pin connectors, I take these two adapters and plug them into each other. Male, it's male. This is the set. This is the set that we were using uh, just a moment ago in the earlier part of the video. But I can do the opposite. I can go, you know, 25 pin. I can do exactly the same thing. Uh, female to female, male to male, male to female. All, all possibilities are possible with these four adapters. So if you're going to have any of these adapters, I recommend that you get 
all four of these. We talked about the RS-232 tester. We talked about the breakout box. And then, in addition to this, there are also three different types of no-modem adapters. And they're conveniently numbered number one, number two, and number three. Okay, I'll hold each one of these up. No modem adapter number one is called a printer adapter. Printer adapter just crosses two and three and everything else goes through. Usually printers um, don't really have much needs in terms of flow control, so that's why you have this adapter here. Okay. This one they call a standard null modem. You have two and three crossed over, and four, uh, four and five is C RTS and CTS, and that goes to eight, which is a uh, data set ready. And the same thing on the other side. And the null modem adapter that we used before is this number three one, which crosses over receive transmit RTS CTS, and then Data set ready and data terminal ready are connected together, and also um, CD for carrier carrier detect as well. So this set here is what I would call a complete, uh, usually with a couple extra wires as well. You can throw in a few more in your kit if you want. Let's grab a few more wires here just to show the example of this kit. You get the idea, I think. This is what I would call a complete RS-232 hacker's kit. Okay, everyone. I think this is going to be enough for today. I have a lot more content on RS-232 that I could give you. As you saw in my huge bag of tricks, I have all kinds of cool gadgets. This is just the start. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye everyone.